Have you ever spent days or weeks trying to resolve bugs in multi-threaded or multi-process applications just because the bugs tend to disappear or change behavior when you try to reproduce them? Well then, stay tuned in this video to learn about a technology that can make bugs 100% reproducible. I am Mohini, a senior software engineer at Undo, and today let's talk about concurrency defects. Concurrency defects, if not detected early, can have severe consequences like crashes, hangs, incorrect results, performance degradations, security vulnerabilities, and more. They can be difficult to catch during testing because of their non-deterministic nature. They may require specific system states to manifest, making it difficult to reproduce. What's worse is that, since concurrency defects can be so hard to reproduce, causes often go unfound and uncorrected. You might be testing your system for days, hours, or weeks, and some concurrency bugs can still slip into the final product and once they are released in the production, they tend to hide and can attack in such unexpected ways that it can be very expensive. General ways of reproducing concurrency bugs can be input variation, manipulating the input data or the execution environment such as varying system load or resource availability to trigger different execution paths and expose the bug, timing manipulation, altering the timing and scheduling of threads or processes by introducing delays by sleep operations or other ways to change the interleaving of threads, logging and tracing, adding logging statements or tracing mechanisms to capture the sequence of operations and the state of shared st data, heuristic exploration, applying knowledge and intuition about the code base and the nature of concurrency bug to guide your exploration, randomized testing to explore different combinations of inputs and execution paths. As we can see that reproducing concurrency bugs can be time consuming and iterative, I would like to introduce you to Live Recorder by Undo which makes software failure reproducible. It captures the recording of the application as it runs including any bugs or errors. It captures all the non-deterministic data to the program such as thread switches, I.O., signals, shared memory access kind of things which allows recreating the program's execution exactly as it happened. This recording can then be replayed in our time travel debugger UDB for further analysis and debugging. Time travel debugging provides a one-click workflow from a test failure to a time travel debugger placed exactly at the point of failure, skipping the tedious steps usually required to reproduce the problem and enabling developers to start debugging test failures instantly. Let me demonstrate this technology using an example. The program is a simple producer-consumer scenario using pthreads in C. It has multiple threads simultaneously accessing and modifying the shared variable val using the CASA or compare and swap operation protected by a mutex lock to ensure that only one thread modifies val at a time. The producer thread increases val by one and the consumer decreases it by one. Finally, the main thread waits for all the threads to complete and prints the final value of val. The expected value is zero because we have equal number of producers and consumers. The go flag is used to synchronize the start of threads. Upon running the program, we get a non-zero output which is different for each run, indicating that there is a concurrency bug. Instead of applying different heuristics to solve it, we have live recorder in which we can alter the scheduling of threads to expose the bug and run the program multiple times until it fails and save a recording of the failure. Live Recorder has a feature called Thread Fuzzing which interferes with the regular scheduling of threads in order to expose the concurrency bugs more easily. Using Thread Fuzzing, some concurrency bugs which are very rare in normal conditions become statistically more common. Thread Fuzzing has the following four modes. Starve. This mode attempts to encourage race conditions by randomly picking some threads and preventing them from making progress for a short period of time. Random. The execution history of a program is divided into basic blocks or BBs, which are units of execution consisting of deterministic operations. Normally, Live Recorder lets a thread run for a fixed amount of BBs before switching to another thread. Random mode makes the length of these runs random and often much shorter to increase the number of thread switches. Switching inside BBs, Live Recorder by default allows switches to happen at basic block boundaries, for example, a jump instruction. This may hide bugs which have inconsistent status for a short period of time. The InBB setting allows thread switches to happen anywhere. Switches around locking syncing instructions. 
This mode allows extra thread switches around instructions implementing the basic locking functionalities like mutexes. Doing this makes it more likely that another thread where locking is not done correctly will be run at this point exposing a concurrency bug. To enable thread fuzzing with the default options, use the thread fuzzing option in live record. To enable only selected components, instead of using the thread fuzzing option, set the undo tf environment variable to a comma separated list of components as shown. Let's run the program multiple times under live record with thread fuzzing enabled to expose the concurrency bug. Generally, a recording is always written when the application terminates. In our case, I will use the save on failure option in live record to save the recording only when the program exits with a non-zero status. Upon completion, the recording name is printed to the terminal. We will replay this recording in Visual Studio Code using our time travel debugger called UDB. I have pre-installed the time travel debug for C++ C++ extension in VS Code to enable UDB as a debugger in it. I will load the recording generated using live record using the replay a live recorder recording configuration in UDB. The debugger control panel should pop up. As we can see from the call stack, we are in some libc functions. Let us set a breakpoint at the print statement in main and do a reverse continue to reach our code in main. As can be seen, the content of val is minus 27, which must have been set in the compare and swap or the casa function, as it is the only function that modifies the val variable. The casa function should receive the new value as an increment or decrement of 1 from the old value, depending upon whether it is called from the producer or the consumer. There must have been a time when this condition failed as we ended up in a non-zero number in val. Since UDB allows us to go back to any time in the recording, we can set a conditional breakpoint at line 17 in the CASA function to break when the new value differs from the old value by more than 1. Now after setting the breakpoint, if we do a reverse continue, it will take us to the time in the program's execution history when the condition was met. As can be seen, the old and the new value differ by more than 1. How can it be that the arguments are so far apart when the caller is passing two numbers that should only differ by one? We need to look at how the caller is passing the arguments. Let's do a reverse finish to see who is the caller first, producer or the consumer. It's the consumer and we are trying to change 131 to 130 which does not match with the arguments we just saw in CASA. So let's step through the instructions to find out when did these values change. As we step through, we can see that the old value gets updated to 131 and the new value gets 103. We can see that the caller is reading the value of val variable twice, once for the first argument and then again in the expression for the second argument. We know that the val variable is being updated by other threads and we are currently not inside region protected by the lock, so we cannot assume that the value of variable val stays stable across multiple reads. This analysis suggests that the caller needs to ensure that it performs a single read from the val variable and uses the value to derive both the arguments to the CASA function. So we just reproduced and resolved a concurrency defect in a single record and replay iteration, eliminating any frustrating guesswork. With time travel debugging, concurrency bugs are no longer an enigma but a challenge we can conquer with confidence to ensure reliability and performance of our software systems. Thank you for watching the video and I hope time travel debugging can help you fix concurrency bugs faster.